Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Chestnut Level and our revival service. We'd like to get started tonight by standing, and we're going to sing Tell It to Jesus. Good to be in God's house this evening. Amen. Amen. Y'all have a good, uh, in, y'all enjoy service this morning. Amen. I know I did too. Um, I tell you what, some, I got to spend a little bit more time talking to the band just in general a little bit last, uh, yesterday evening and then even this afternoon. And I'm really just have a, a heart for God. Um, so what you see is what you get. And I, I'm telling you, I enjoy, I, like I said, I enjoyed the preaching just as much as the singing. Amen. And I mean, both were good. I, I'm, I'm telling you, we, we got it straight today. We got a, a challenge before us. Uh, so uh, it was so good to have that, uh, to kick off our revival. But we're not going to come down from that either, right? We started way up high. We're not going to come down by going to Robert next, all right? So, well, I've already heard, uh, already heard complaints already since I've been here, since they've seen you come in tonight. Well, that you didn't bring any Aunt Millie's pizza with you from... <laughs> from Milton. So, I mean, it's just, well, that's for the well-being of your life. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, it is so good to have Robert and Sherry with us, uh, even without the pizzas. We're still thankful to have y'all. Um, but uh, I'll say a little bit more about that later. Um, but as we come tonight, uh, are there any special prayer requests uh, that we need to make mention of? Okay. Um, yeah, Sarah Harlow. Anybody else? Debbie Sparks. Debbie Sparks. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Well, this evening, like as we go to the Lord, because we're going to, like I said, we want to go on with the revival service tonight. But as we just welcome you. And then go to the Lord in prayer. And then we're going we're gonna to join together in song. We're going to have some special music tonight. And then Brother Robert will be coming to share with us whatever the Lord has laid on his heart for us to hear. But as we go to the Lord in prayer, you remember from this morning, right? If you, if you were here, even if you weren't here, one of the things that we were challenged to do is expect something. Right? So if you came tonight just because and you didn't come to expect anything, you're going to get exactly what you expect. Nothing. All right, but if you came expecting God to do a work and expecting God to tell you something specifically, you'll receive it. So we need to make sure that we're going to the Lord with the right heart uh, tonight. Amen? Amen. Let's, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, God, we are so thankful and grateful to be gathered together once again today to come to this place where the church body can gather in the church house, uh, Lord, to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, we are so thankful that we have a risen Savior that we celebrate, a risen Savior that we worship. And so, Lord, as we come together tonight, uh, we do seek uh, to see and seek to hear something from you tonight. 
Lord, I pray that we would come expecting something as we were challenged to do this morning. Lord, I pray that you would be with this entire service from beginning to end. Lord, I pray that you would be with Brother Robert as he shares what you've laid, the words that you've laid on his heart for us to hear. Lord, I pray that you would be with our special music tonight as well, that you would uh, bless them and their uh, playing and singing tonight for us. Uh, Lord, and I pray that all of this would be done for your glory and your honor. And Lord, even as we come tonight, Lord, we all have things going on in our lives and we all have different family members and friends, and, and even as we have so many on our prayer list that are going through so many different things, Lord, it is easy for us to become overwhelmed about those things which we cannot control. So what I pray that as we come, we would give those things to you, not give them to you and then take them back when we leave this place tonight, but Lord, that we would honestly and sincerely lay them at your feet. Lord, knowing that it's all in your control, it's all in your time, all in your hands, all, all within your sovereign knowledge. So, Lord, we do lift up those families, lift up those friends, lift up those church members, Lord, who need your healing touch, those that need your comfort, those that need your strength. Whatever the case may be, Lord, I pray that you would just move in a way that they would have to say, oh, God has been at work in, in this situation today. Lord, we say all this and we ask all these things and we pray all these things uh, only because we have power in the name of Jesus. Only because we can come through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And Lord, we do ask all these things in that precious name of Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen and Amen. So let's stand once again and we're going to sing 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. sun comes up, it's a new day dawn, it's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Your rich in love and your slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. So bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul, I worship.
worship your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Forevermore. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his soul. I'm gonna sing like never before Oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name You are holy, I'll worship your holy name God, I'll worship your holy name That was quite a service today. And after I heard those folks sing, I started not to come. <laughs> but I'm doing this for God, and I'm doing it for the mercy of the Lord. So. Heaven is a city built by jewels rare. Its, it's beauty is a splendor yet untold. If you neglect salvation, you'll never enter in. You'll never ever walk the streets of gold. So don't overlook salvation while living here in sin. Someday it may be too late to pray. Someday when you need him, he may not let you in. How awful if he should turn you away. Sometimes we get discouraged while we walk this weary way. But Jesus said, it every burden bear. So take him all your troubles when it seems all hope is gone. Just trust him when you go to him in prayer. Jesus said, be ready, for you know not when the hour. He may come at morning, night, or noon. So keep your eyes upon him, and your soul filled with his power. For you know he is surely coming soon. So don't overlook salvation while living here in sin. Someday it may be too late to pray. Someday when you need him, he may not let you in. How awful if he should 
should turn you away. How awful if he should turn you away. I was uh, asked to do two, which is a little unusual, so I was trying to figure out what the second song should be. And I love the real old gospel songs. I think I grew up with this song. This is one of my favorite songs. And you're going to know what it is. <coughs> but uh, I think it's one of the prettiest songs ever written just about. Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear! The hour I first believed When, when we've been, been there Ten thousand years Bright shining as the sun We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior's ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. Unending love, amazing grace. Y'all both for that. Uh, enjoyed that very much. So I told Miss Janet, I said I failed. I didn't realize she was singing with Kenny. I didn't even put her in the bulletin, but I made sure I got her on the slide. She didn't mind it at one at one bit. She didn't want y'all to know ahead of time either. But uh, uh, we do appreciate both of y'all uh, willing to bless us with song this evening. Uh, so with that, it is now coming time to ask one of my brothers in Christ to come up here. And and y'all know, I know they're home folk for us here at Chestnut Level, because as soon as I got here, they decided to leave. And uh, I don't know. Keep on. <laughs> so we pick at each other. We have from day one. Um, I don't even know how long we've known each other, but uh, really, especially since I since I came here and um, since he's been in the ministry, we at times would talk all the time during the week, and sometimes they get further and further away and further weeks apart, but uh, one thing, even as we were just talking before the service, that uh, no matter how long it's been, we can come back and pick up right where we left off. And uh, just, I know, a good godly man, got uh, a heart to share the gospel and to preach God's word. And uh, without without further ado, right, let's welcome Brother Robert Hicks uh, to share what God's laid on his heart. It is a pleasure to be back at Chestnut Level. I know um, 
when Zach and I first started talking about this, it, we said, well, I got plenty of time to think on and pray about what I want to talk about, and time has a way of getting away from you a little bit. So it's good to be here, and uh, I know we miss you guys. Sherry and I talk all the time about, you know, different ones here, and we talk about you. We talk uh, how much we miss you also. <laughs> and uh, we even talk about you, Zach. And uh, normally that's when things are not good at home. But um, it is good to be here. And as Zach said, when he first got here, it wasn't long after before we left. And so therefore we know God definitely answers prayers for sure. Either way you want to look at that. Whatever, you, however you want to look at that, it just, it is what it is. But it is good to be, good to be back in the house of God and it's just a level with friends and family that we can call brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ as well. So, but as I told our congregation this morning, I'm going to open it up with a little joke for you because I, I, it's a former pastor at Dan River told me this. So this guy named Bob was a deacon in his church. And Bob was one of those guys that was not going to change his ways. He was going to do, you know, the old saying, Zach, we've always done it that way. We're not going to change. It's going to be, we're going to do this until the end of time. So Zach won't about to, me, you know, Zach, sorry. Bob won't about to budge or anything. <laughs> Zach ain't going to budge either. Zach doesn't budge much either. But anyway, so one day Bob died. Preacher did the funeral. Other deacons standing around the coffin of the cemetery before they lowered him, lowered him down into the hole. They looked at the casket and said, okay, Bob, now we're thinking outside the box. Everybody good on that? Yeah. If you have any questions, ask Zach afterwards or whatever on that deal. But it is good to be back with you guys today. We are going to be in Psalm 143. If you want to go ahead and turn there. We're going to talk about communication. Communication is a wonderful thing when it's done right. You know, we have these little devices here. We can text. We can call. We can help me out. You know, people Snapchat, Instagram, old people Facebook on them. You know what, though? I'll tell you. If you put this thing in and you hit the phone and you actually dial, somebody will answer this thing on the other end, perhaps, at some point in time. So... We can actually call people on these things from wherever we are these days. But communication is a great thing. Last Sunday night, Sherry and I had this way of communicating with each other. We um, were fixing a pizza for dinner. Pizza got ready, and I'm in charge of the pizza, so you know where how that thing went from there. But anyway, I, Sherry's in the living room watching TV in her recliner. I pull the rack out to get the pizza. The pizza slides off the back of the rack onto the burner at the bottom. It catches on fire. So my communication was like, Sherry, get in here. We do know our smoke detectors work in the kitchen now. We do know that. So the ceiling fans work too. So we went from pizza to a chicken salad sandwich. And uh, got the smoke out, so no worse for wear. So thank goodness for that. And God was watching over that as well. So we opened the doors up, the windows up, and everything else. And the dogs were a little confused on what was going on. So, But they know they didn't get into pizza. So they're probably more upset than we were. But Psalm 143, if you can and able to, will you please stand as we read and honor God's word this evening? Beginning in verse 1. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In your faithfulness, answer me, and in your righteousness. Do not enter into judgment with your servant, for in your sight no one living is righteous. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness like those who have long been dead. Therefore, my spirit is overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is distressed. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your works. I muse on the work of your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul longs for you like a thirsty land. Answer me speedily, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, lest I, like, lest I be like those who go down into the pit. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. For in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. In you I take shelter. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good, leading me in the land of uprightness. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. In your mercy, cut off my enemies and destroy all those who afflict my soul, for I am your servant. Father God, I pray, Lord, that you'll reveal to us what you would have us to hear tonight from your word. And Father God, we give you 
the glory and all that you're going to do this evening. And I pray for your will to be done in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. So I have notes. I'm not as young as Zach. That's why I forget things from time to time. So I'll have my notes up here and um, all that good stuff. As you notice, we have a red phone. Talking about communication, it is off the hook, as you see there on your, on your slide. But we have a hotline straight to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords any time of day, any night, wherever we are, and whatever may be going on. And his phone is never off the hook. So to communication, this prayer that David is writing about here can also be considered an earnest appeal for guidance and deliverance. In this psalm, David felt like he needed to confess his sins, as we all should, because daily we fall short of the glory of God and we sin daily. We wake up every morning, I know myself, I wake up and the first thing I do is thank God. I fall on my knees and thank God for the day. He saw me through the night. God, I'm going to give you my best today. And probably up off my knees in the next 30 seconds, I've already sinned in some way, shape, or form. But David felt like he needed to confess his sins that were keeping him from enjoying God's blessings. And that's much what our lives are today. Our sins keep us from enjoying God's blessings. Now, I know we can confess our sins to God, and he is righteous and just to forgive us of our sins. But as I preached the last few weeks to our church, we all maybe have one or two sins that we just like to hold on to. They're fun. They're enjoyable. They're not hurting anybody. They're not even doing, I still go to church. I still sing the hymns. I still put money in an offering plate. So what's it hurting, God, if I want to hold on to a sin or two? It may be keeping you from a blessing that you don't know about. But David is praying this prayer, and he's confessing sins to God, and he concluded that the suffering he was experiencing was actually from the enemy. The enemy always wants to see us fail. He always wants to see us fall, and he's pointing at God, hey, look what your son or your daughter's doing. You thought they loved you, but they don't really love you. Look how they're acting. Look what they're watching on TV. Look what they're looking at on the internet. Look what they may be reading. Look what they may be posting and gossiping about on social media. David was actually experiencing God's chastening. So David asked God for his mercy. We all know that it's true that the Lord can use painful circumstances. We go through trials and tribulations in our lives, maybe daily, maybe weekly, maybe monthly. We may go a while before we experience anything. My challenge to you this evening is if you're going through life and you're not experiencing difficult circumstances or trials or hurdles in your life that Satan may be placing there, what's your walk really like with Christ? Because I think in order to draw closer to God, you have to go through difficult circumstances. When you became a Christian, if you have become a Christian, you've accepted Lord and Savior. If you got told you're going to have an easy life because you've now accepted Christ, you got told a lie. It's not an easy life, and it's not one that we can do on our own. If you try to do the Christian life on your own, you will not do it for long. We have to have God's strength and his power in our lives in order to do the Christian walk. But God uses painful circumstances. He can also use people. And after being in the school level, Christy Lips can probably attest to this and other teachers here. You want to have some painful circumstances working the school system for a little while. Love those kids. Some of them I don't like a whole lot, but I love them. But he uses people to bring us to repentance. But sometimes those very things are God's tools to polish us, refine us, and maybe mature us in our walk with God. If everything's going great and there's no problems and there's no difficulties, Why do we need to trust God? If we walk the aisle one day and 
prayed the sinner's prayer and fell on our knees and confessed to God our sins and we prayed a prayer with the pastor of, hey, I need a savior. I need to wash away my sins and I want to follow Jesus the rest of my life. If we did that and then we never darkened the church doors again and we never picked up God's word again and we never prayed to God again and we never did the right things that God wants us to do, obeying his commands again, we don't really have a Christian lifestyle and we're probably not really saved. So many people today have this ideology that I'm a good person. Well, my grandpa was a good person, or my grandma was a good person, or my aunt, uncle, mom, dad, whatever the case may be, and they pass away. Well, I know I'll see them again one day in heaven. Truth of the matter is, I hope you do. But if they've never accepted Jesus Christ, it doesn't matter how good a person they ever were. And that's a sad state of the world we live in today. But we need to mature in our walk with God. We need to become what God wants us to become. In this psalm here that we're reading reading this evening presents many requests to the Lord, all of which can be summed up in two prayers in these verses. The first six verses, David is crying out to God. Simple words. Hear me. And in verses 7 through 12, David is saying to God these two simple words, answer me. This is a good example of prayer for us to follow in our lives. So let's look at each one. And the first one go back is hear me. We all want to be heard, don't we? We want people to hear us when we're having a conversation with them. When we're talking to them, we want to be heard. In fact, we get so caught up in a conversation while they're talking We're already thinking in our mind the words of wisdom that we're going to give that individual. We really don't even hear what they're saying sometimes because what we have to say is more important. And sometimes all people want to do is just be heard. They want to know they have a voice, that their opinion matters, that they matter. We need to tell God our situation. You can say, well, pastor, God knows our situation. He knows everything about us. He created us. Yes, he does. Yes, he did. But it's like any relationship that we have or that we had growing up with our own earthly parents. It's a two-way street. It's called communication. Most times my dad knew where I was, what I was doing. Sometimes good, sometimes not. He knew where I was and what I was doing. And when I come home to talk to him about it, he already knew the answer before and knew what was going to be said before I even brought it up. But he still listened. More often than not, I got a stern word back. Probably well deserved, probably deserved more than I got. But we need to tell God because he is faithful. And he is righteous. He loves us. He cares for us. He wants what's best for us. A lot of times we don't think God cares about the small things in our lives. He only cares when there's something difficult going on. There's a big situation. Maybe there's sickness or there's someone that's been diagnosed with a daily disease. And that's when we come to God. But God wants all of us. Not just part of us. Not just on Sundays. 24-7, he wants to be in our lives. David acknowledges his own sin in his life in verse 3. We know God's word tells us in Romans 3.10, there is no one righteous, not one. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Even if we've prayed the sinner's prayer and we walked the aisle and we've been baptized and we've become a member of a church and our name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life and all those things, we still sin. We still sin daily. And then we try to categorize our sins. 
At least I'm not doing what that person's doing. At least I'm not as bad as that person over there. God doesn't categorize sins. If we tell a lie, if we have hatred in our heart, God's word tells us we have hatred in our heart, it's just as soon as being a murderer. If we have lust in our hearts, it's just as good as being, it's committing adultery in God's eyes. He doesn't categorize sins. Sin is a sin as a sin is a sin in God's eyes. But Jesus' righteousness is imputed to us through faith in him. God is righteous in all that he does because he is holy. God's word tells us, be holy for I am holy, is what God tells us to be. He's not asking us to be perfect. He's asking us to be obedient. He is holy and faithful to his covenant, to his promises. He has not once failed to deliver on his promises. David told the Lord what he was enduring because of his enemies. It says in verse 3, For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me dwell in darkness like those who have long been dead. How many of us have been in despair? Maybe feel like we need to give up. In some cases, may even ask, God, where are you? Are you even listening to me? Do you hear my cry out to you? We've all maybe felt lost and despondent at different times. God has never left us. He never will. David found solace and hope in remembering former days. We need to experience God's mighty works. David longs for God's intervention to restore his spirituality, his thirsty soul. In Psalm 42, verses 1 through 2. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so my soul, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God, when I shall come and appear before God. David gives and gave a vivid description of his situation. And this helps us to feel the pain that David was experiencing. You see this in verses 3 through 4. It gives a picture of being crushed to the ground, lying in a dark grave, discouraged by a fainting heart that wants to give up. Some people believe God's people will never have dark days and difficult times. And that's what's wrong today. Some people that have prayed the sinner's prayer think they should have a perfect life. Once they've accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, they think they shouldn't have any problems. There shouldn't be any problems at all. There should be no tribulations, no trials, no heartache, no disappointments. But once you pray that prayer, and you accept Jesus Christ. And there's a change. There has to be a change. If there's no change, there's no salvation. It has to be a change. And once you make that change, if it's truly a change and you're truly a child of the king, Satan is coming after you with all he's got. That's why God's word tells us to put on the full armor of God. We have to be protected from the fiery arrows that Satan is throwing at us. Satan knows our weaknesses. He knows our shortcomings. He knows what tempts us. He knows what sins we enjoy. And those sins are going to be put in front of us continuously. In hopes that we will just turn our back on God. David wanted to experience the faithful love of God so that he might understand the way he should go for protection from his enemies. A lot of times people tell me, I just don't know what to do, Pastor. 
I just want to give up. I don't know. I don't have any real reason to go on. I've got this going on. I feel like I'm being attacked here and I'm being attacked there. Wherever I go, I'm being attacked and this and that. And my first question is, well, have you prayed about it? Yeah, but I've prayed a little about it, but God really doesn't care about it. I know that. You read God's word about it. No, I haven't done that. Have you gone to church or talked to some fellow brothers and sisters about it. No, I don't really go to church anymore. Me and the pastor had a falling out. and They changed the carpet in church, and I don't want to go back and better that. I don't want to do that. But I want God to fix the problem. But we want him to fix it the way we want him to fix it. We want him to fix it on our timetable, not his. We want a fib to fix it the way we want it to be fixed because we know what's best. After all, it's me, God. I should get what I want. After all, I, I go to church. I try to be a good person back to that again. Much like David wanted to do here, this is what we should want, to walk in God's way to be like him in our daily walk. Verse six, David spreads out his hands and cries out, my soul longs for you like a thirsty land. Does our soul long for God like a thirsty land? Do we come to church to be fed, to be filled? I talked about this morning, if we're going to church to be seen or to see, Who's there and what they're wearing and what they're doing? Then my favorite one is all people talk about all the time. I can't believe they came to church. I saw them out drinking last night, and here they are sitting in church today. We don't know what they're dealing with. Maybe that person we saw drinking is kind of coming down a little bit off of his drinking. He's trying to get right with God. David wanted more than just to be saved. He wanted fellowship with God. And he wanted guidance as he obeyed God's commands. Is that what we want? Do we want to be more than just saved? Do we want to actually be a tool that God can use in our daily life? Or do we just want to say, hey, you know what? I pray the prayer. My name is written in heaven. It's in the Lamb's Book of Life. It can never be erased. It can never be blotted out. So, good luck. I hope you get there also because I'm already going. So have fun. I'm going fishing. Or do we want to truly have a relationship with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? And I'm not talking about a relationship where we just come to church on Sunday mornings and we open up God's Word for 30, 40 minutes, hour and a half of Zach's preaching. <laughs> Don't worry, mine ran over this morning. <laughs> we got to be in tune with God daily. Our communication with God cannot just be on Sunday mornings. It has to be a daily communication. It has to be God's word. We talked about this morning also. The old saying is goes, if you see somebody's Bible falling apart, their life is probably not. If you see somebody's Bible that's pristine and clean, maybe they just bought it yesterday, but if it's all neat and everything, I wonder what their walk is really like. <laughs> it is not enough just to walk the aisle and say the sinner's prayer. We have to live it out, being in communication with God. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the second prayer that David prayed in verses 7 through 12. Answer me. I know Sherry's the thinker in our family, no comment out of you. I'll ask her a question, get her thoughts on something, and she likes to pause and have this hesitation that drives me nuts. I'm like, answer. 
Yes, no, maybe, whatever. Now she's in Gat where she says, I'm thinking. I said, okay, I'll wait. When we cry out to God in prayer, we should expect an answer or else why pray? If we don't expect an answer, why are we praying? We should pray with expectancy to our Heavenly Father. David prayed with expectancy. So what were the answers he was waiting anxiously for? The same answers we want to receive today. We want to see God's face. God's face shines upon his people in gracious blessing. If you look over in Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. If we seek his face in our daily walk by communicating with him, seeking him, he will give us peace. He will give us peace in the difficult circumstances, in the difficulty of the trials of life. God's word tells us we have a peace that surpasses all understanding. I'll joke with people sometimes, hey, just walk around with the peace of God on your face and a big smile on your face. People will wonder what you're up to. Why are you so happy in difficult circumstances? Because we have the peace of God. I don't need to know what the future holds because I know who holds the future. What's going to happen tomorrow does not concern me because God's already there. But if God was displeased with them, he would hide his face from them. So it says in Psalm 69, verse 17. And do not hide your face from your servant, for I am in trouble. Hear it again, to hear these words. Hear me speedily. We should seek God's face, as it says in 1 Chronicles 16. To know the shining of his face means to walk in the light of his face and enjoy the smile of God upon our lives. But the absence of that, absence of that blessing is like living a death. We also want to hear God's loving kindness, as it says in verse 8 of our text this evening. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning. God's mercies are new every morning. His compassions fail not. We should seek his face and we hear his voice. It should give us strength to overcome the enemy. John tells us the sheep hear the voice of the shepherd. We know his voice and he knows ours. He hears us when we cry out to him in all situations. The word of God reminded David of God's unfailing love. The word of God gave David strength, and that's what should give us strength also. It should also give us guidance on the path that we walk upon each day. We also want the blessing of experiencing the protection of God. David looked to the Lord's righteousness and faithful love to both deliver him and destroy his enemies. God was David's rock, as it says back in Exodus 30, 21 through 22. And the Lord said, here's a place by me, and you shall stand on the rock. So it shall be while my glory passes by that I will put you in the cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. God will protect us. He'll watch over us. We also receive from the Lord a knowledge of the will of God as we see in verse 10 also this evening. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. If we reach out, God is always there. His hand is always reaching out to us. It's when we take our eyes off of him. It's when things fall apart. 
I think about Peter in the boat when the storms were up and the waves were crashing into the side of the boat and there was distress among the fishermen there and they see Jesus walking on the water. And he calls for Peter to get out of the boat and Peter is focused on Jesus. And he gets out of the boat and starts to walk on the water. Then the waves get a little rougher. Much like life today. It gets a little rougher around us. And we want to take our eyes off and look and see what's happening. And we start to sink. My image is this. As Peter starts to sink, Jesus reaches his hand down to grab Peter and pulls him up from the depths of the sea. When somebody reaches their hand down for you to help you up, to help you out of a situation, they're not going to let go. Jesus is not going to let go. We will let go long before he does. His word teaches us and shows us the path that we should take. As it says in Psalm 119, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. A knowledge of God's will gives us confidence in the difficulties of life. In order for it to give us confidence, we have to know it. We can't know about opening it just every so often. Just in difficult times or difficult circumstances, we have to open it and know it and study it and read it and meditate on it. And before we read it, we should ask God what he wants to reveal to us through his word. But a lot of times we just read it to check off a box. We come to church to check off a box. We put money in the offering plate to check off a box. The only way to know the King of Kings and Lord of Lords intimately is to communicate him through his word. And so many times that we will pray to God by communicating like David's doing here is hear me and answer me. but we only do half of that. We do the prayer of hear me. Hear what I have to say because it's important. But a lot of times we don't listen for the answer because we're so busy. We say our prayer on our knees or on our bedside, wherever we may pray at, at our office desk, or our kitchen table, wherever it may be that we maybe say our prayer and it's like, man, I got to get to work. I got to go. But God, I pray to you this morning. Be still and know that I am God is what he tells us. Be still and listen to the answer of what he's telling us. And a lot of times we don't want to hear the answer because it's not something we want to do. He may hold us accountable for something. That's a word you hear every day today, isn't it? He may hold us accountable. We may have to do something that's uncomfortable. Sometimes we we tell God, hey, God, send me where you want me to go. I'll go wherever you want me to go. As long as they have a five-star restaurant, heating, air conditioning, indoor plumbing, all TV, color TV, Wi-Fi. Got to have Wi-Fi, right? All the comforts of home. But I'll go wherever you want me to go. Just send me. Here am I. We don't have to go to a third world country to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can do it in Blairs, Virginia. We can do it in Milton, North Carolina. We can do it in Ringo, Virginia, Chatham, Virginia. There are people in our backyard that are searching and looking for somebody just to hear them. And there may be somebody to answer them also. They answer their questions. God answers our prayer by helping us bring glory to his great name. As Zach said to We talked about back here in his office. It's a great privilege and rewarding 
occupation to stand up here and share God's word. It's an awesome responsibility as well. But it's not about Zach or myself. It's not about any of us in this room. If what we're doing is not bringing glory to God, then what we're doing is wrong. If we're looking to bring glory to ourselves, then we're failing God. It's not about us. God is allowed, is using us. It's his tool to share the ministry to others. We see this in verses 11 through 12. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake, for your righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. In your mercy, cut off my enemies and all those who afflict my soul, for I am your servant. When Jesus Christ was walking the face of this earth, he didn't come to serve, to be served. Let me get this right. Hold on. It's wrong in my head. It's wrong in my head. It sounded good in my head. <laughs> he did not come here to be served. He came to serve. So why do we think we're more important? We all know how the Lord's Prayer starts out. Our team says it before every softball game. Hallowed be thy name is the first request in the Lord's Prayer. Hallowed to render sacred, to consecrate, to make holy. For God is holy. It ought to be the motivation of all of our prayers. David knew he had a great work to do for the Lord. And he depended on the Lord to help him. to accomplish it and bring honor to God's name. What a privilege and honor it is to share from God's word, not just at Chestnut Level, not at just Milton Baptist Church, but maybe in a food line, Target, Walmart, wherever our lives take us. I'll, speaking of food line, I'll tell you this story. I, one Saturday morning, I got up early to go do our grocery shopping. Sure, it's not an early rise. So I went and did that, and I ran into a guy that I've known for a while. We always talk sports when I see him. We're always talking sports. This day I got a nudge in my side. Robert, tell him about me. Invite him to church. I'll be honest with you, I brushed it off. God, we're in the middle of a conversation about, about something that's important. We're talking about sports. I walked away. Did not invite him to church. Did not tell him about Jesus. I'm walking through the store. You know what I'm saying, Zach? I get this feeling like, oh, man. Why didn't I do it when I was standing there? Tell you what, God. Don't ever do this. I made a deal with God. Don't do that. I'll finish shopping. I'll go back over. If he's still there, then I'll talk to him. Okay, that gets me off the hook. I do my shopping. I go back over to where we were. Guess what? There he was. I said, okay, God. So I shared Jesus with him and invited him to church. Why didn't I just do it the first time? All of us have been there. I'm sure. We had something else we had to do, somewhere else we had to be. Didn't want to take your time and stop there and share Jesus with you. I try now every time I get that nudge to at least mention Jesus' name. We need to have that same confidence that David had. The confidence in the Lord that he will work for our good and his glory. It says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Communication. 
In closing this evening, God wants to hear our prayers. He wants to hear from us. He wants to know what's going on in our lives, not just when we're going through bad things. God, thank you for blessing me today. Thank you, Lord, that you gave me that opportunity to just share about you with this coworker or this person I was standing behind the line in the store. I got to share Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for that opportunity. Father God, may you give me more of those opportunities to share, to shine your light in this community, in this world. Father God, let me listen to you as well. Let me hear your voice in my life on maybe who you mean to share with next. God knows who we're going to encounter when we leave this building. He knows who we're going to come in contact with tomorrow. And maybe they do, maybe they don't know Jesus Christ. But communication. There's nothing like face-to-face -face conversations. I know that doesn't happen much anymore. We had a softball game this past Friday night up at William Campbell. Coming back home, we stopped at Wendy's. and That was Friday night, and I thought it was going to be Sunday before we got our dinner. So it's Friday night that was so slow. But this couple comes in, and they're, I don't want to say old. They're probably close to our age. Yeah? They sit in across from each other. Yeah, my age. <laughs> Not as young as Christy. They sit in the cross from each other, and neither one of them looked up. They both pulled their phone out and was doing this right here. I don't know the story. I don't know the situation. But face to face conversation, sharing Jesus. Because every opportunity that he has given us that we've either acted on or ignored or whatever the case may be is we're going to have a face-to-face -face conversation with Jesus one day about it. He's probably going to ask me, Robert, you know that day in food line when you just ignored my to talk to James about, about me and inviting the church? Why'd you do that? What am I going to say? Mm, I don't know. but we're all going to have to face him face to face. We're going to have to answer for our, the life that we lived. Bobby Bowden, a former coach of Florida State University football team, once said this. Somebody asked him about all these kids he coached over the years, and Coach Bowden said, one day I'll have to stand before God, and God's going to ask me, and hold me responsible for what I do with these young men that he's placed in my path. And we're all going to hear one of two things from God. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Or the other words of communication will be, depart from me, I never knew you. So what are we doing with what God has given us? How are we communicating it with others? Are we living the life that they need to see to really know who Jesus is? Let us pray. This gracious, loving Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, that you do hear our prayers. Father God, may we not be in such a hurry that we are running out the door, being somewhere else, or running to the TV set and not listening for the answer. Father God, may we trust you for the answers, just like David did. Your mercies are new every morning. Your compassions fail not. You are forgiving, just, and righteous God, and we thank you, Lord, for that. That you are long-suffering with us as well. Father God, we are still all sinners, 
Some of us saved by grace. I don't know the hearts and conditions of anyone in this room. Father God, I pray, Lord, if there's someone here in the sound of my voice this evening that has never accepted you as Lord and Savior. I pray, Lord, that this evening will be the time they accept you. Father God, maybe seeds have been planted over the years and they're being watered tonight. And if that's the case, Father God, I pray, Lord, and give you praise for the increase. Father God, maybe there's someone here tonight, uh, maybe there's more than one here tonight, maybe they had us accept you as Lord and Savior, but their life has kind of veered off a little bit. They're still living that sinful life. They're holding on to that one little bit of sin or that couple bit of sins that Satan is still placing there that they're enjoying, that they refuse to give up. They refuse to go. They refuse to turn over to you and wash it white as snow. May you work in their lives this evening as well. Father God, thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for just who you are, that you love us. May our soul thirst for you and your word as a deer thirst and pants for water. May we search you, seek you out, seek your face in all that we do and all that we see. Father God, I pray for your will to be done in our lives. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I might actually wait and stand, but as, as he just preached about, we're talking about communication. Are we willing to come and do that communication with God now? Right? To ask him to speak to us. If you came expecting something tonight, then you can be waiting on that answer. You can be spending time in prayer and saying, God, yes, hear me. God, speak to me. God, revive me again. I love verse 11 where he says, revive me because your name is for your sake. If we, if we hold the banner of Christ, if we hold that we are Christians, then everything that we do has his name on the line. So if we want to be moved, we want to be used of God, it's his name on the line. So this evening, as always, look, the altar is open. If you want to come and pray, you do business with God. By yourself, if you want to come meet me right here, I'd be glad to pray with you. If you don't want to come by yourself, grab your neighbor, bring them on with you. Come on, pray. Strength in numbers, amen? Amen. As we sing our invitation hymn, In the Garden, think about how precious it is to come to the garden and pray in time with him and what he'll do. You move as the Lord leads as we sing. Yeah. 
Amen. Amen. Let's give Brother Robert a hand. Greatly appreciate you, brother. Sherry, I see he's still picking on you. If I, I'll take care of him later. We'll, we'll have a heart to heart. I know you do. Bless you. They talk about people getting crowns when they get to heaven. You're going to have a slew of. <laughs> and we're not talking about her. We're talking about Sherry right now. Uh, but yes, man, what a, a good time in God's house this evening. Amen. And again, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. And good to have you back back over here with us. Uh, uh, he still lives right down the road. So, um, But next time, bring Aunt Millie's. Um, but anyway, I look, I, I, I thought about I couldn't help. I know as much as you like to tell jokes and stuff, I'll close uh, a little bit with a joke today. Is that, you know, People got in line, getting ready to get in heaven and say, well, hey, you've got to tell me another name for Jesus before I'll let you in. OK, well, the first guy is like Savior. I said, All right, that's good. You can go on in. Next guy. And, I, and I'm speeding up the story for you. The next one says, uh, Master. He said, oh, that's great. Come on in. Third one in line. His name was Robert. <laughs> he said, Robert wasn't necessarily all the way there. Oh, no, never mind. I'm talking. He said, Robert, do you have another name for Jesus? Before You got to tell me another name for Jesus before I'll let you in. And Robert thought and thought and thought and thought. He said, only one I know is Andy. And that's about what it sounded like in heaven. It got real quiet and Andy. Well, Robert, why would you say that another name for Jesus is Andy? Well, y'all all ought to know. You just sang it. Andy walks with me. Andy talks with me. <laughs> Good to smile in God's house. Amen. Amen. Great night tonight. Good to be in God's house again. Uh, pray you can come back and join us tomorrow. Bring somebody with you tomorrow as well. Uh, encourage. I told you we need to encourage the church body, right? The church is the one that needs reviving. But at the same time, we'll welcome anybody through the doors. Amen. Uh, tomorrow night, Brother uh, Justin Oates, we're look, looking forward to him uh, and looking forward to hearing him play, sing, and preach. He's got the trifecta. Uh, no, I, no. But uh, anything else before we go? All right, well, let me close us in a word of prayer this evening. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, God, we do thank you so much for allowing us to be gathered together again uh, in this place. Lord, we thank you for your spirit moving and working in our hearts, and we thank you for the messenger of the word tonight. Thank you for using him and uh, Sherry, Lord, and just pray that you would continue to lift them both up to use them in their ministry there at Milton. And, uh, and Lord, just pray that you would just put a hedge of protection round about them in all that they do. And Lord, I pray that you would continue to be with our revival here. Uh, Lord, we pray that each and every day, Lord, that you would speak to us, but not just that, that we would be as, as we've been challenged tonight, Lord, to also be ready and willing to hear the answer from heaven. Uh, Lord, we're quick to ask you, but we're not quick to listen. So Lord, I pray that you would do a work in our hearts, not just tonight, but Lord, all week long in the days and weeks and months and years to come. And Lord, when it's all said and done, we'll give you all the praise and glory and honor because it belongs to you and to you alone. Lord, be with us now. Keep us safe as we go our separate ways, Lord, and bring us back safely at that next appointed time. We love you and we praise you. We ask all this in that precious, matchless, and holy name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all God's children said, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a good night and see you tomorrow.